Most radio transmitters, like this walkie-talkie for instance, are omnidirectional, which means that they transmit radio waves into all directions. But sometimes it's better to be able to send the radio waves in one specific direction. Now you can do that with a special kind of antenna, like a Yagi antenna or a dish, or you can do it using a special technique called beamforming, which is what we're going to talk about in today's video. The interesting thing about beamforming is that it allows you to create a directional source without actually using specialized directional antennas. So it just uses very simple antennas like the one on this walkie-talkie. The catch is that we do need to use multiple antennas. So we can't just use one simple antenna like this uh, and do beamforming. In order to do beamforming, we need an array of antennas, which is a fancy way of saying we need multiple antennas. So we can do it with two antennas, we can do it with four antennas or five or ten or how, however many we want, as long as it's more than one. I will tell you that the more antennas you use, the better it works, but we're going to get to that later on in this video. So then, of course, the question becomes, how do you do it? How does it actually work? How does it manage to create this beam of radio waves? Well, it all has to do with something called interference. Interference is what happens when waves of any kind, so not just radio waves, from different sources interact with each other. And it comes in basically two flavors. There is destructive interference, which is when two different waves cancel each other out, and so the intensity becomes smaller. And there is constructive interference, which is when the waves add up and reinforce each other increasing the intensity. Now, the effect of interference can be observed quite well by dropping some stones into a pond. So when I drop one stone into a pond of water, you can see waves rippling out from the location where the stone hit the water, as if it's a radio transmitter transmitting out radio waves into all directions. If I drop two stones into the pond, I can see that the waves that are being, well, transmitted, start interfering with each other. And in some places we get a greater intensity, this is where the waves are constructively interfering, and in other places we are getting a smaller intensity, which is where the waves are destructively interfering. The idea of beamforming is that we control very well where exactly the constructive interference takes place and where exactly the destructive interference takes place. So how is it done? Well, let's run the same simulation again, but now not for a random placement of some antennas. Let's take two radio antennas transmitting exactly the same signal and place them right next to each other. Here's what happens. So as you can see now, to the left and right sides of this array, it's only two of them, but I'm going to call it an array anyway, we've got lots of destructive interference. You can see the intensity is very small. In fact, it might even be zero. But in front of the array and behind the array, we're getting constructive interference and the intensity is much greater. So we've now created a directional radio transmitter. It's not very directional. I mean, we just went from going from all directions to going, you know, kind of like that to the, to the front. So it's not exactly what you'd call a beam, but it's more directional than the omnidirectional antenna that we had before. This is what happens when I do the same thing, but now with four antennas placed in a row, you can see the beam has become narrower. And this is what happens if I take a line of 10 of these radio antennas, again, all transmitting the same signal. This is what it looks like. So now you can see that the beam has become very narrow indeed. And the more antennas we add, the, the narrower we can make this beam, the better it works. And so this is the principle behind beamforming. But it gets even better than this, because now we get to steering this beam, aiming it towards different targets. You see, if I want to aim a beam 
that is produced by a Yagi antenna or a dish antenna or some specialized kind of antenna, then what I need to do is I need to get a person for me to move the antenna around or I have to do it myself uh, because I don't actually have that much money or I have to build some mechanical setup that like automatically moves the antenna. But with beam forming, I'm able to move this beam, I'm able to steer the direction of the beam without any moving parts. I don't physically have to move these antennas. What I can simply do is I can control the timing at each one of these antennas. So what I'm going to do next in the simulation is the leftmost antenna is going to keep its original timing. But then the one slightly to the right of that is going to have a slight delay. And the one to the right of that is going to have an even greater delay. And so from left to right, oh, from left to right, from the view of the camera, the delay increases. And now this is what we get. So by controlling the delay on these radio antennas, which we can do electrically, we don't need mechanical parts for it, we can steer the direction of the beam. So we can steer the beam with no moving parts. And this is why in many situations beam forming is used instead of something like a dish or a Yagi antenna, because not only can it produce a directional radio signal, you can then also steer that radio signal without any moving parts. Anyway, now you know a bit more about beamforming and how it works. I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.